Hey, what's up? I'm Jimmy. Welcome back to Timeless Steel Garage. Now listen, I don't think I've ever gotten as much hate mail as I've gotten for going from a Holly Sniper back to a carburetor. So I'm here to tell you about my story. Let's get into it. All right, here's the deal. I'm a retired mill, so I'm going to go through this like a mission debrief, and I'm going to tell you my story. So if you guys have been paying attention, this 64 of year behind me was a present to my wife for our 10 year anniversary. Her father had a 65 and, and some of her best memories with her dad were with a 65 Riviera with a 401 nail head. Now this is a 64 with a 425, close enough, okay? So I wanted to do this for my wife and uh, I wanted to make it an easy to drive car to a grocery store or whatever. So in my brain, I'm like, well, let me try this Holly Sniper. Reached out to a couple of friends and I've had several friends say, yeah, the technology is way better than it was 10 years ago. These things bolt right on and they work great. I was skeptical. I told you guys that, but I said, let's try it out anyway. Now the funny part is, if you guys watched the previous videos, the damn thing ran great on a carburetor. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of plays in here. So anyhow, I like to support American companies when I can. Uh, Holly is a great company. They're located in Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is two, two and a half hours on a bad day from my house. So I was happy to support them. I'm a huge fan of Holly carbs, the 4150 carb. You know, you're either an Edelbrock guy or a Holly guy. I, I think they're both good carbs and I actually prefer the Carter slash Edelbrock design on this car and on most street cars. Now, when you're building for horsepower, I prefer a Holly 4150. So anyhow, we can get into that later. So I decided that uh, because they're so close to me, I went on their website. They have a great website. Um, and, and the whole point of this video, I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly experiences, right? I'm going to just, this is my story. There's so many fanboys out there that no matter what I say, people are going to jump on it or they're going to love it. One of the two. But uh, so I went to Holly's site. Holly's got a great site, um, super easy to use. Their prices are pretty much fixed no matter where you buy their stuff from. Unless you're a business and you're and you're a distributor for them, if you're if you're buying as a customer, their prices are pretty much fixed. And if you buy from their website, it's free shipping. They're so close to me, I just went direct. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered their uh, master kit with a black um, Carter style four barrel um, throttle body unit, and then I decided to order their. HyperSpark complete ignition system along with it. So it was like $3,000 all said and done. Um, but the basic sniper unit's about $1,500. So I ordered it, super easy. I immediately got a receipt in the email. I got shipping verification in the email. And, it, and honestly, it showed up in like two days. Can't complain about that, plus one point. Um, so I got the stuff. And I pulled the car in the shop and I started tearing it apart to put it together. Now, if you watch most YouTube channels, like a lot of those guys are sponsored. I'm not sponsored, I'm just a regular guy, I pay for my own stuff. But they make it seem like they bolt that thing on in a day. I'm here to tell you, you're not bolting it on in a day. You can expect like a weekend of work. Um, but in my case, because I was pulling the 64 apart and doing a whole bunch of other stuff at the same time, it took me about three days, but like I said, I did brakes, I did disc brake conversion, I dropped the gas tank, I did, I did all, all kinds of stuff. Watch the previous videos if you want to see it. Um, but really, the thing is, is like, this is a universal product, so you can't expect Holly to sell a kit that's going to work for everybody. It's got all the basic stuff you need, uh, but it doesn't have everything. And everybody out there is going to have different stuff that they got to order that doesn't come with the kit. Um, so just a quick run through of what I did to this car. So the stock pressure line on this car is 3 eighths of an inch and the stock return line on this car I believe is a quarter inch. Which brings me to my next point. The instructions that come with the kit are abbreviated and if you go to Holly's website there's like an 80 page guide. It's got what 80 something pages 
that is way more in depth, way better instruction. So if you're out there watching this video and you buy a Sniper 1 or a Sniper 2, regardless, go to Holly's website and buy their full guide uh, on installing this. But um, the shorthand instructions don't say anything about it, but the guide instructions say that the, the car, the Sniper requires 3 8 pressure, 3 8 return. So knowing that, the easiest way to do that was to just use rubber for the pressure and rubber for the return. Now it comes with the E85 ethanol high pressure fuel hose and it comes with I think 25 feet. This thing's a boat and it wasn't enough uh, so I ordered another roll. Now another roll of that stuff's like $80 um, so that's one thing I had to buy. Basically, uh, the hard lines on the car were in a great location. I didn't want to make it so I couldn't uh, do carburetor again. So I maintained the stock hard line for pressure and I ran a whole rubber line for return. And if you watch the previous videos, I'll show you all this. I chose to drop the tank, uh, drill a hole in it for a return. I cleaned it out, replaced the sender while I was in there, all in the videos you guys have seen. And uh, I basically installed a whole brand new return line with rubber clamps that I had to purchase sheet metal self-tapping screws that I had to purchase and a whole nother set of uh, basically the stock the, the fuel line that the kit comes with was enough to run the return but I still needed more fuel line for the pressure side and some odds and ends the vent on the uh, fuel tank etc um, now remember when you buy this kit Holly's selling it to go in any car out there so you can't expect it to have everything you're gonna need so I ran the fuel system, I cleaned the tank really well, I purged the fuel system, uh, purged the lines, because even if it's brand new rubber, you're gonna have dust and stuff in there. Mounted the inline fuel pump on the rail. I didn't choose to do an in-tank pump just because I was trying to get the car ready for a road trip as fast as possible. I do recommend if you have the time, anytime you're doing an EFI conversion, you're always better off putting an in-tank pump. So there's that. I chose to do use the pump that the kit came with. It does come with a pre-filter and a post-filter. Both are very important. I installed those. Uh, while I was taking the engine apart, I noticed a bunch of gaskets that needed to be replaced. Replaced all those. Uh, put the decided to do some cleanup on the top end, powder coat, paint, put everything back together. And when it comes to bolting the hollow unit on the intake, super easy. If you can bolt the carb on, you can bolt the hollow unit on. Um, now here's where some more things I had to purchase. So uh, I think any good EFI system or even any good carburetor, any car I build, period, I like to put a fuel pressure gauge at the inlet of whatever style fuel system I'm using. So I typically will put a fuel gauge on the regulator and I'll put a fuel gauge at the carburetor or at the throttle body of an injection unit uh, or the fuel rail, I'm sorry, because it just, for tuning, for roadside emergencies, like if you have fuel gauges, it's immediate. You know if you're getting fuel pressure, super easy to diagnose. So obviously the Holly kit doesn't come with that, so I had to buy a couple of fittings, I had to buy a gauge. Um, the Holly kit is internally regulated. I'm not a fan of internally regulated systems because if they fail, it's you can't really mess with them. So I'm a big fan of using an external regulator and. The 2JZ Merc that I'm building has got an external regulator. The EcoBoost DeLorean has got an external regulator. And in my opinion, if you're installing a sniper, you should also install an external regulator because then you know exactly what pressure is getting to that unit. Now, because of trying to get ready for a road trip, I just used the internal regulator that Holly came with. Let's see what else. Um, the Holly comes with a coolant temperature sensor that is set for 3 8 MPT. Now most old classic cars are going to use a half inch MPT. So I had to buy an adapter for the Buick to go from half inch to 3 8 not a big deal. Um, and that's just because I wanted to use a plug in the head. You know, you could just drill a thermostat housing, which they tell you not to do. Um, you could, there's all kinds of other places you could put that sensor, but I wanted to use an existing plug in the head. Um, and then other than that, like, it comes with all the wire you need, but I, anytime I build an EFI car, I prefer clean power off the battery. So instead of providing a 12 volt signal from the car, I ran relays and fuses, and I powered the relays directly from the battery 
and I use the 12 volt signal from the car to activate the relay. And that's just a good idea for any EFI car. You want the cleanest power possible as close to the battery as possible, and that'll eliminate a lot of problems. So I did all that, hooked everything up. Um, I'm trying to see what else did I have to get. So the stock air cleaner from the Buick Nailhead won't fit the Holly unit because of the way the Holly's shaped, it's got fuel fittings coming right out the top of it. So you have to buy a drop base from Holly to use a standard 14 inch air cleaner. And I went ahead and bought a Summit Racing 14 inch air cleaner. Uh, and I just used a filter, which is a K&N unit and a top hat. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only other things I had to buy were uh, the Holly. So Jen, we're talking Sniper One. Now at the time that I recorded this video and installed this unit, uh, the previous videos I'm saying, there was only one Sniper. It was a Sniper One. I'll get back to that later. But there's a lot of known issues with the Sniper One. Most guys will use a plastic rod for the air cleaner. You've got to use MSD superconductor wires or uh, just a really good well insulated RFI style uh, spark plug wire so I had to buy those um, there's just a lot of stuff like that good grounds the wiring has got to be clean good solid connections solder connections you don't want to use quick connectors all that kind of stuff so that's pretty much all the extra stuff I had to buy I would say so the sniper itself was like 1500 bucks the spark plug wires were like 150 the air cleaner from Summit was like 50 Just odds and ends stuff. I probably spent $300 in extra stuff to make the Summit work in this car. And that's going to apply to everybody out there. You're not going to get everything in the box you need for your particular application. Um, but it's a pretty all-inclusive kit. Most of the hard parts are there. Some guys might get lucky and everything you need is in there. Um, or you can just get away with using the stuff you got laying around the shop. This is a huge car, so I had to buy some extra stuff. But anyhow, here brings me to a point that I think is not well represented in the uh, YouTube videos out there. And I think a lot of the YouTube channels out there are sponsored by Holly. I'm definitely not. They make it seem like you bolt it on in a day and it's all good to go. not the case i had about three days in it and a lot of that was i had to order some stuff i started working on things here and there to, you know other systems but realistically it, it'll take you a weekend to install it We're a basic guy weekend mechanic whatever um so i got it all installed and uh, i went to fire it and the first time i tried to fire it, i didn't get any fuel pump activation at all and i thought it was something that i did um, so I checked the wiring to the pump, it was good. I didn't understand why it wasn't working. And what I realized is the Holly won't send the signal to the pump until you program the wizard. So if you just hook power up to it and you try to, you know, you expect to hear that pump come on, it won't come on. You've got to run through the setup wizard and the Holly first. As soon as I did that, cycled the key, turned it back on, it immediately powered the pump. So if you're out there, don't freak out when your pump doesn't come on at first. Just program the wizard and it'll work after that. Um, I did do the HyperSpark ignition, so I phased the distributor, did everything in accordance with the instructions there. That's super easy. And that HyperSpark is badass. Put your t number one cylinder to top dead center, point the rotor at that cylinder, put the little plastic cap on there, phase the distributor, it, it's done. And if you buy the HyperSpark and the Holly stuff all together, it's all pretty much plug and play. There's like four or five wires uh, that you've got to plug in. And all the wires in the harness that I wasn't using, I de-pinned. And that's something I recommend to anybody doing EFI. Any extra wire that's not being used, think of it of a, as a radio antenna. It's one more antenna to, to catch radio interference or EMI, that kind of stuff. So. You want to eliminate wires that you're not using because if you have a bunch of wires coiled up, that can cause disturbances with the computer. And that goes, that's any EFI. Uh, so anyhow, after all that was done, I put the key in it, turned it over and it literally like a second of turning it over and it fired off and it fired off. It ran great. For about 20 minutes, I was walking around the car like singing the praises about how awesome this unit was. 
uh, turn it off a couple of times, turn it back on, because you know you got to replicate. I don't believe anything until I replicated it. And the throttle response was amazing. I went up there, grabbed the throttle bodies. It was like twice as fast as the stock ignition and carburetor. Um, the motor sounded happier. You know, I put the uh, ignition, I locked the ignition timing at uh, whatever it was, 12 degrees or 15 degrees. Put the timing light on it. Like the HyperSpark stuff worked great. So like I said, I, initially I was super stoked, okay? And then, Turned the car off, went back around, started looking, just to make sure I didn't have any fuel leaks, safety stuff. Cranked it back up, I was up under the hood messing with some things, and I felt something hit my face. And I realized it was fuel, I could smell fuel, and I looked and the front butterflies, like the primaries, where the primaries would be on a car, were just overflowing with fuel. And I didn't get it in the video uh, that you guys watched previously. But I mean, it was overflowing with fuel to the point that I thought I was gonna burn my shop down. I mean, the whole top of the motor was soaked in gas. So I killed it immediately. It filled my crankcase with gas. I mean, my, my breather started overflowing with oil. I had a huge puddle under the car. I was afraid I ruined the motor. I was super pissed off. You can imagine. Um, so I didn't know, like maybe I, I thought maybe the TPS was reading high or something crazy that was causing the computer to think that the thing was wide open. So I checked the handheld and it was showing 3% or less than 3%, which was fine. And it wasn't stuck open. So I'm like, let me crank this up and see if it happens again. Sure enough, cranked it up and I could slowly watch the front float bowls just start to fill, fill, fill when I turned it off. And that's what you see in the previous video. It's actually draining down into the crankcase. Uh, at the, I was able to get my phone out at the very end to record it because I had the GoPro going for you guys. I didn't have my phone out because it was playing music. So then I was like super pissed. I posted some stuff on the forums like, has anybody experienced this? I double checked all my install stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I had some guys reach out to me and they say, hey, there's a whole bunch of those units that were bad from the factory with powder coat. Like they had overspray in the powder coat, especially the black units. I had people reach out to me and say that the handheld computers, there's a bad batch where those don't work. I had people reach out to me and say, hey, it's really common for the fuel injectors to come unplugged in shipping. And I had people ask me, hey, was your fuel system new? Is it possible you blew grit into the injectors? All that stuff and then I had all the haters you don't know what you're doing you didn't install it right you're an idiot I've never had a problem with mine I've installed 50 gazillion of these and I've never had a problem sure great cool story uh, so one when I buy something for fifteen hundred dollars and people tell me I need to disassemble it to check that the injectors are plugged in properly hard pass it should be checked before it's sent to me and it should work out of the box. Two, to those guys who think that my fuel system was bad, the fuel tank was cleaned, the entire system was new, and it was flushed, and it was filtered. Nothing came from my fuel system into that holly. So then I found out, well, there's some guys that say that, you know, the hollies have grit and stuff in there when they're shipped, and you gotta clean them out before you hook up fuel to them. Again, ridiculous. For the amount of money they cost, I shouldn't have to do that. Um, and for all those people who think that I don't know what I'm doing, listen, I've built EFI systems from scratch. I've run Mega Squirt. I've run standalone ECUs. I've run factory ECUs. I've run piggyback ECUs. I've swapped 2JZs, LS engines, EcoBoost engines. I've swapped all kinds of stuff. I've built all kinds of stuff. I know what I'm doing when it comes to EFI. I wouldn't call myself a tuner but I'm also pretty decent at getting a car to a point where it's ready to go to a dyno. Um, so, you know, for those of you out there who think, oh, it's gotta be my fault, fine, believe it. That's cool. Uh, I'm just trying to share my actual experience because I don't think there's a lot of unedited, non-sponsored videos on YouTube that show actual experiences. Also, I reached out to Holly's tech support I ran through all the diagnosis stuff with them. I answered all their questions and they immediately agreed with me that it was a defective unit out of the box. Because, I mean, typically 
when injectors fail and they got stuff inside of them, they don't spray efficiently or they'll, they'll, they'll not spray at all. They don't stuck full open. But anyway, Holly had no issues with telling me that the unit was bad. And the tech support guy that I talked to, he said, just go ahead and go through our return process. He gave me the phone number and the web page. And uh, if you go to Holly's website, it clearly uh, breaks down return process. So that brings me to the next part of the story. Those of you who wonder what the customer support is like. Now I will say, if you wait on the phone long enough to get tech support, the guys at Holly are great dudes. But the customer support for returns, not so much. So first of all, when you call customer support for returns, you're not talking to somebody at Holly. I imagine that they're hiring a company to handle returns that it's not has nothing to do with Holly. They just pay a company to do it. And I know this because let me break it down. First time I, I tried to return the product, I called the phone number. I was on hold for 25 minutes. I finally got a lady on the phone. And I explained to her the situation and she said, well, do you have the part number that you want to replace? And I said, listen, um, I don't want to replace the whole kit. I just want to replace the throttle body. I don't want my money back. I just want to exchange the throttle body, put a new one on the car. And she said, well, sir, I need a part number. And I'm like, well, the only part number I have is the stuff that I ordered. And she's like, well, I don't understand what the part number would be for the throttle body, so I'm going to have to pass you on to a different guy. Well, I believe she tried forwarding me to tech support to get the throttle body number. And after being on hold for 20, 25 minutes, so a total of over 40 minutes, um, I was at work. I couldn't sit on the phone anymore. I hung up. Um, so the next day... I, uh, I tried the email because they have an email system as well. So I sent an email, I explained the whole thing, and I actually attached the email to my purchase order so it had all the parts numbers in it. It showed when I bought the unit, all that stuff, and I sent it in. I immediately got a response that said, due to overwhelming returns, seven to 10 business days, don't send duplicate emails, it'll slow the process, all that garbage. Um, I think my total email process was about 10 days. The first time I got a, a response was about, I want to say five days later. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to throw a stone, but they basically said, what are you trying to return? Even though I had already just explained that in the email that I sent them. So whoever sent me this email didn't read any of it. So I sent it all again. And they said, what's the part number? So again, they don't understand the systems. They don't understand the parts. Whatever company's handling the returns, they want a part number. So finally, I, I went to Holly's website. I went to the single, if you're just buying the sniper without the master kit, and I gave them that number. And then I didn't hear anything back for a few days. So I responded after 10 days or so. I said, hey, am I going to get any return process help? I'm fed i'm furious like this is a lot of money i spent and imagine if i had a deadline which i did that i blew um if you guys don't respond to me or help me out i'm going to tell all my youtube channel friends about all this whole scenario whatever so finally i get a response and it's like do you we reviewed your case and we would have to have the entire kit back i said okay so you want me to completely uninstall the entire system in this car for a defective throttle body? And they said, yes sir, that's how it has to be. I said, okay, fine. So I went through the whole process. I put the car on the lift. I had to take all the fuel lines out, all the fittings, all the garbage, uh, to send back to them. And I said, sure, I will do that. Send me a return label because on their site it says, we'll provide the return label once the kit's received or whatever, once the product's received, Holly will inspect it and confirm that it's defective. If it's determined defective, they'll refund your money or replace. So <laughs> they said that, I agreed to it, and then they didn't send me a return label. Three more days goes by, and I'm like, I finally, I'm like, hey, I, I'm cool with this. I'm still waiting on the return label. Nothing. Couple more days goes by. Hey, still waiting on the return label. So now we're like, we're well over two weeks. Um, so finally I'm like, screw this. I'm calling the phone number again. I get this chick on the phone 
and it's like a whole I gotta start from scratch explain the whole thing she was pretty rude she acted like it's, it was my fault that she didn't understand what I was talking about like you know if you've ever went to an auto parts store and tried to ask a parts technician for a part that they clearly had no clue what, what that part was that was my general feeling talking to this person and she was nice but it was frustrating so finally I just told her I said look I want my money back I'm done with this I'm frustrated and she says well sir uh, we can give you your money back as long as the product wasn't installed and I said how am I supposed to determine that the product's defective if I don't install it so she's like well I'm gonna have to talk to my supervisor because I got I got kind of irate and uh, so I'm on hold for like 20 minutes <laughs> She comes back and her supervisor, okay, my supervisor said that we're gonna refund the money, but you have to send the whole kit in. I said, okay, fine. So she sent me the label, like on the spot. I was on the phone with her, I checked my email, and then she sent me an RMA number. They have to have the RMA number to return the product. Uh, and then what I also thought was kind of weird was, <laughs> they said it takes up to six weeks to get your money back, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then on top of that, she said, when you send this unit back to us, you have to call us and notify us that the unit has been shipped and confirm the shipping number before they will initiate the return, which I understand. That's fine. Um, but I kind of don't understand that because as a business owner, like, when you put those things, when those, when they send you preprint labels and you put them into the system, it's like automatic. So why do I have to call you to tell you about it? Um, so anyhow, that's all that. I was trying to get the car ready for a weekend with my wife. So the the easiest thing at that point, when it became obvious two weeks prior to that, that I wasn't going to get a new Holly anytime soon, and I didn't know how long it was going to take. Hey, let's go back to carb. I had literally everything brand new. I had a rebuilt carb on the shelf, a Carter AFB. I had distributor stuff, wires, plugs, gas, everything. So I basically, in like a half a day with my neighbor, Dennis, we rebuilt this thing factory. Rebuilt the distributor, you know, points, all that stuff. Put a brand new carb on it. Put a mechanical fuel pump back on, which by the way, if you're putting a Holly Sniper on a classic muscle car, don't forget you're going to need a mechanical fuel pump block off plate, which is something else I had to buy. Um, anyways, it was like four to six hours of work and we cranked this thing off. And if you want to check my YouTube channel, there's a short uh, that talks about why I went back to carburetor. And that's the exact moment that I fired this thing off. And it runs great again. So then I'm like, I go back to the original reason. Why did I convert this thing to fuel injection? Well, it was to make it easier for my wife to drive. Well, my wife's had a carb mini for, I don't know, seven, eight years. I, I can't even remember. Like, she knows how to drive a carburetor. And when you start looking at the simplicity of the system, like, there's only so many things that can go wrong with a carb and the ignition system. I mean, I got spare points in the glove box. I've got spare fuel pumps in the trunk. I've got, like, all the basic stuff that could fail is already in the car. So then I started questioning myself. This thing's so original as a 64, why am I converted to fuel injection? I feel guilty about it. So I'm like, it's staying a carb. The damn thing runs great. I have no reason to go back to a Holly. Uh, so for all you guys out there, like, oh, I quit on Sniper and I went back to old school technology. Listen, I love carbs and I love fuel injection. In fact, most of the cars I've built, if you paid attention to my channel, are modern injection, modern engines, retro rods. My wife likes original. She digs classic, that's what she's got. So anyhow, after all that, do I think Sniper's a bad product? No. I think what's bad is the customer service could be better. Tech support's great, uh, but if you gotta return a unit, it's a pain. And uh, I think, here's, here's some of the problems I have with it. I ordered this thing, went through all this, and three weeks after I ordered it, they released the Sniper 2. So you would think that when I ordered it, they would have said, hey, we're putting out a brand new unit soon. You may want to wait. That didn't happen. 
And you know Holly knows about all the existing RFI problems and all the other garbage because the Holly 2, it's got a better ECU in it. It's, it. it's got RFI protection. They got rid of the rubber return line. They recommend an external regulator and they sell their own external regulator as an add-on to the kit. Like all the stuff that I'm complaining about with this install, they've solved with the second install. And that Holly Sniper 1's been out for, I don't know what, 10, 15 years? So obviously they knew about all the problems, so that's frustrating. Um, but do I think it's a bad unit? No, I think the quality control, you know, it. for example, three guys in my family, we all installed snipers in the same month. We all three had different problems. And you know, it's funny, after sharing my story with people, I started getting messages, hey, mine did the same thing. I swapped it out with a new unit and it worked great. So I think, the quality control is the issue, and Holly is a huge company, and they're probably selling millions of these units, so I get it. I'm not even upset about it. They're going to give me my money back. It's, it's been frustrating to get to that point, but I'm going to get my money back. So I'm not against the sniper, but I'm definitely not going to put a sniper back in this. Um, I think going through the whole process, I just I like this car card. My wife likes it carb. However, this 84 Camaro that's sitting here that's a pile, perfect candidate for a sniper and I think the money that I get back from this uh, I'll go ahead and just order a sniper too to put in that Camaro it needs a new motor so I think I'll get a short block 350 pull all the good speed parts off the one that's already in there and I'll put a sniper and I'll try again and then if I have bad luck with that unit then I'm done with snipers but all the hate you know people go to like the, the excuse of I'm going to make the car easier for my wife, totally not true. You could teach your wife how to drive a carburetor. You could teach them how to put out a carb fire if it happens. You can teach them how to get the thing warmed up when it cranks. Um, carbs are easy. And if you're having issues with a carb and you don't want to rebuild it, just buy a new one. The Carter AFB that I had rebuilt, I bolted it on, did nothing to it, it, it cranked right up. You buy an Edelbrock 650 out of a box or a Holly 650, they work. I mean, they, they, it, the carbs have been around for so long, they've got them dialed in. You just bolt a new carburetor on, it'll solve 90% of your problems. Um, so anyhow, I hope that sheds some light on why I ditched the sniper. And again, here's the deal. Anytime something's built for everything and it's universal, it's not gonna be good at any one thing. It's gonna be somewhat okay at all of the things. So just remember that. The idea that a bolt-on EFI is literally gonna be bolt-on, don't mess with it and it's gonna work and it's gonna go, not true. And that's coming from a guy that's done, I put an EcoBoost in a DeLorean, I put a 2JZ in a Mercedes, I put an LS in a 70 Chevy. I could go on and on. There's no such thing as fuel injection that you just bolt in and go. They all need to be tuned. They all need tweaked. Uh, you know, factory cars that are fuel injected have millions of dollars invested in the fuel system and the ECUs alone. They have huge engineer teams that do nothing but that. So really, the fact that Holly is able to put out a product that any bloke like me could bolt on is a pretty impressive feat. But don't expect all these big time high money YouTube channels, they make it seem like you're gonna bolt this thing on and your car is gonna be like the best thing since sliced bread. Not true. Also, these Hollies come with this little screen and it makes it easy to program, but remember, you can download Holly's tuning software and use your laptop to hook into it. And that has a whole bunch more fine tuning, a whole bunch more features. And I'll finish with this. If you're a guy out there that's bolted a sniper on and you like it, it's working great, awesome. I don't care if you're a guy out there that's running a carburetor. EFI, carbureted, dyno time is worth the money. Anytime I've ever taken a car to a dyno, it's come out a better running vehicle, a faster vehicle, putting bigger numbers down. Um, find a dyno that you trust, find a tuner that you trust. If you like your carb, put it on a dyno. If you like your EFI, put it on a dyno. I mean, I the first time I took a car to a dyno was my 70 Chevy carbureted, and I think I picked up 50 wheel on the dyno. Like there's street tuning, there's dyno tuning, a good mix of both makes a good car. Anyhow, 
I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a lot of talking, but I think it'll answer a lot of questions for you guys out there that are on the fence with a sniper. I think either way you'll go, you'll be happy. Just realize that there's a lot of guys that have had problems out of the box like me. Doesn't mean you should give up on it. I'm not gonna give up on it. I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna go as a sniper too. This old girl stay in a carb. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Time with Steel Garage.